Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. Always a pleasure to see everyone on this, well, middle December pen show. And um, welcome. One of the things I'd like to say is one of the reasons that I think it's good to watch this show is that we are completely unaffiliated. So there's no agenda. There are no pens that we're pushing because we have them in our warehouse. I'm not a pen company. I do independent reviews. And when something is sponsored, it's clearly marked. So there's a lot of value in getting honest, unbiased opinions. And it's also nice to have a pen show that isn't related to a company. So very nice to see you all. We have a really interesting show for you this evening. First, I'd like to welcome everyone. I see quite a few comments already. That's always wonderful to see. I want to thank and welcome the members. Thank you for being a member of this channel. You guys keep this place going. You keep the lights on. You keep me motivated. And I am amazed at some of the friendships that we're developing. Thank you so much. If you'd like to become a member of this channel, you can go where you subscribe. There should be a join button next to it. Otherwise, you can put in YouTube and then slash Hemingway Jones slash join. We'd love to have you behind the scenes. Some of the fun stuff going on back there these days at the upper level of membership. We're now doing letter exchange. So if you want another reason to exercise your fountain pen, you can exchange letters with me. So we're doing pen pals in the upper levels of membership. So that's super fun. Of course, I didn't consider the fact that I'd have to write all these letters at the same time. I probably should have staggered it, but it's actually wonderful. So it's a fantastic way to get to know people better. And for you guys to see my handwriting up close, for however much that's a good thing will be up to you. I actually have a letter right here ready to go to one of our members. Maybe I'll give you a little peek. Look at that, huh? Ready to go. Super excited about that. So we're pen pals in the upper levels of membership. So it's absolutely brilliant. See some love for my sweater. Thank you very much for that. So... Join the channel if you would. What I'd like to do this evening, though, a very fun show for you guys. It's definitely the time of year when everyone is looking back and reminiscing about the year, the best, the worst, the sublime, the ridiculous, the fantastic. So why should we be any different? So what I thought I would do is go through my year in fountain pens, inks, journals, and journaling. I thought that might be fun. We'll talk a bit about some of the videos I've posted, what were the highlights, what failed miserably, what did well. And then maybe three quarters of the way through, we'll talk about some television shows that I've also watched and what my opinions are on them. So I think that makes it a pretty fun show right there. And uh, we'll base it off of all of that. Very exciting year in review. So I think perhaps we should get started with some reminiscence. Um, I think when we look back a year, we really have to include last Christmas. So we will include that and one of the best pens I've ever owned was gifted to me by my wife last Christmas and I bet many of you know which one it is but I'll tell you it was the Mont Blanc Egyptomania a pen which really kind of shook up my whole experience of pens it was one of the first ones that really got me out of posting because it can't be posted. I really sort of rediscovered this love for Egyptian things that I've had since I was a child. And uh, I've also went down the 
perfect ink rabbit hole to find an ink that matches that perfectly. So that was a super fun addition to the channel. You guys got to see many posts on it around the internet because I'm on Instagram um, here at YouTube. YouTube's my home. I consider this my home base. We've done a bunch of content here, a bunch of videos, really, really good stuff. So yes, the Egyptomania is the first pen I'll talk about this evening. It's still in my top five favorite pens. Absolutely brilliant. Has a very soft, medium nib. Fantastic writing experience. Doesn't have a lot of line variation, but you know what? The writing experience is so great. The design, the feel of it sort of being this vintage style pen. Absolutely brilliant. And that's going to be a bit of a theme this year. So I think you will find that. So one of the other things was the uh, Cornaline de Egypt ink, which is a nice orangey ink I got for Christmas. It was a nice ink, but not really one I'd write with a lot. It goes into that category of inks that are too light, that are more pretty for art and not so great for writing with, even though I'm glad I own it. Sometimes I want to own an ink. I might not necessarily write with it. So you'll see a lot of that. I just put up a video over the weekend. It was kind of a rare weekend posting. It was a review of the Atlas Iron Ore ink, which I quite liked because it's dark. I like dark inks with a lot of contrast. Well, the Cornaline Egypt ink is not that. It's rather light, but it's nice. And if you like an orange ink, it does work. But I often write against palish, uh, sort of weathered, paper in tans and orange gets lost on that if you're writing on bright white not so much of an issue so very good stuff i see some nice questions out there too like simon krupa is asking what was the pen i got this year with no expectations but ended up enjoying i think that's something we'll get to so stay tuned we have a list and we're gonna make our way through it so it should be pretty fun so another ink i picked up last christmas was the mon blonde purple which is a really nice purple and it was my favorite purple until i discovered the diamine imperial purple i don't know if any of you have written with that but that is such a good purple such a nice dark contrasty purple that it makes an interesting substitute for black if you want to really differentiate yourself use a purple ink but it's in that sort of black space where it's darker and it has high contrast the imperial purple from diamine is absolutely brilliant for that so that's a that's a really good one and i do want to talk about papers too i'm sort of going down a list of as i acquired things i also picked up the uh, the pinator um, milano notebook very beautiful absolutely fantastic the folks from pinator sent it along um really nice nice paper nice design nice red cover just really really beautiful oh techno raptor has yet to get a surprise pen gift from someone well i hope that happens soon christmas is coming up you never know my friend so very good very good things coming up so one of the other things that happened this year was the kaveco special collection red pen which was really interesting because I got it a few months after the Y Studio and they look very similar cosmetically. The Y Studio being a little heavier, sort of a little bit more on the, I guess, interactive side with the way the red paint wears off to reveal the brass underneath, where the special collection is more of a, of a set pen, but they both have facets the Kaveco is a bit more elegant, but the Y Studio is brilliant. It snaps together and it's really, really interesting. So there's really a lot of fun in pens that sort of have a conversation with each other sometimes that you get, like those two. I don't think they were influenced in any way by each other. It was definitely a sui genesis. But if you hold them side by side, they do have some similarities, which makes it a lot of fun. So very, very cool. So I see some, Neil Spector's asking me to make a video on how to journal. I have some things coming up on that in the new year. 
I have some beautiful B-roll right now that I'm writing a script to. It's actually taking me a bit longer than I expected, but I'll have that up in mid-January. So just be patient there. It should be brilliant. Um, uh, not to be immodest, but I'm spending a lot of time on this one. And the B-roll is so pretty. And remember, the B-roll is not me. That's my wife who shot that. Um, but it's the one that shot at Walden Pond. So I think you guys will really like that. And I'm spending a lot of time developing the perfect script for it. So I think it's going to be journal related. So I think you'll like that. So another big discovery this year was a Yush paper, which comes out of India. You guys will see it in a lot of my reviews. I love that paper. It has a really nice quality to it. It holds up to whatever abuse I subject it to. Uh, all sorts of flex pens, uh, really, really wet nibs. It put down stub size lines and it just holds up with no issue and it looks absolutely brilliant. So one of my favorite papers, they also always have these really beautiful covers. I think my favorite one has shuttlecocks on the cover, which is really cool because shuttlecocks cocks are still made in India by hand. So you can still get beautiful handmade ones if you're that much into badminton, which is super cool. I love little niche things like that. It sort of drives me crazy that it's um, there's still some remnants of like the old world out there. One of the other pens that I bought this year was the Platinum Kanazawa Haiku Matsutoro fountain pen. And we got into a really interesting discussion of... How much of a $400 pen or $500 pen, I forget what it costs to be honest, goes into the pen and how much in the decoration and how do you parse that out? And at what point does it get ridiculous where you're sort of getting the quality of a couple hundred hour pen and you're spending $1,200 because the artistry is so great? These kind of value judgments come up a lot in any hobby, I think, and particularly in fountain pens. And I personally say that those are really up to you to make. It's not our job to tell you that you're spending your money poorly or whatever. I think if you want something and it brings out a quality in you or your writing that gets you to journal more, it gets you to express yourself more, then it's worth every dime because you're using it. What's a little sad is if you buy a pen and it goes in a case and it doesn't see sunlight, but then that's your right too. Maybe that's your bliss. You don't want to write with it. You want to own it. It's a little different than how I see these things. Personally, part of my mission here is trying to free fountain pens from the desk and from the case and get them out into the world, into libraries, into museums where you can take notes on things you're seeing, into parks, into wherever your life takes you. I think fountain pens should be an integrated part of your life and a tool for your self-expression. That's my vision, but it might not be yours, and I certainly respect that. So very cool stuff, but the uh, Kanazawa Haiku Matsutoro is a beautiful pen. I do write with it on occasion. Sometimes you just want a beautiful artistic gold pen in your hand and it's not a bad choice at all. So I, I see a lot of folks mentioning what their what their year is. It's really fun. I'll tell you guys I could almost just read your comments and forget about the show because you guys are so interesting. So it's one of my favorite parts of the show. So beside a Yush paper, I also discovered Atoms to Astronauts, which is a really interesting notebook brand out of the UK. Very nice paper, very nice notebooks. The covers are all science themed. The ones I have have the universe on them. They have some dinosaurs. Lovely stuff. Uh, aff affordable. They're around $40, I think. Pretty thick. Real nice books. I featured them um, in my B-roll. When you see me writing, sometimes I'm writing in Ayush. Sometimes I'm writing in Atoms of Astronauts and a few others. So really nice stuff. Really nice gentleman that runs 
owns the company actually. So very, very good paper there and notebooks. So here is something interesting. We talked about um, the Diplomat Arrow. I did a video on it, an interesting pen. It has an almost Zeppelin-like shape to it. It's kind of funny, the diplomat symbol, it sort of looks like a propeller and it just, it's right there at the end and it sort of gives this idea of an airship. Mine is green and fluted. It oddly has a little chip in the aluminum around where the cap snaps on, which is rather surprising. Um, it doesn't affect the writing or anything else, but, you know, it just was one of those things that sort of leaps out at you when you put a loop to a pen. As I do, as a reviewer, I'm always looking at fit and finish on a pen. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, one of the sort of pitfalls or, or downbeat, um moments of my reviewing year to see that on the diplomat still wrote beautifully um the sad part is when you get pens is it the one in the million that you got or is it a problem with qc you never really know and it was given to me to do content on another platform not here and it would have been rude to go back and say, hey, there's a problem with this pen. It didn't come straight from the company. So often you see how good a company is when there is an issue, because that's when they come forward and they either make it your problem or they take ownership and they make you whole. But it would have been inappropriate, I think, when you get something from someone to say, hey, there's a problem with this. Didn't, didn't feel right. So... In any case, kind of a kind of a uh, a bad moment for the year, I suppose. Now, what happened simultaneously, though, was that I discovered the Krishna Moonview Two ink out of India, which I just absolutely adore. I use that ink quite a bit. It's really magical. I've been using it for my holiday correspondence in part. This year, I've been using Iron Ore from Atlas Stationers, and I've been using Moonview 2. Last year, I used Carib de Chipre almost exclusively, because that's a really kind of fun holiday color. Unless you go literal, and you want like green and gold. Like this just still looks really festive with the blue and the red. Just one of the really fantastic sheening inks that I've ever seen. So absolutely an incredible and fun discovery and i use that ink quite a bit so one of the big discoveries and this one i have handy of this year and it gets a lot of views on the channel every time i show this i get so much where can i get one sadly i'm sure they made more than one but the problem is it's a hundred years old this came from a small shop in Scotland. And when I was researching the Egyptomania pen, I wanted some B-roll and I wanted to get some design ideas for Egyptomania and just really become very conversant in the Egyptian revival stuff of the 1920s. So I did a search and this came up and I was thinking, boy, that is really, really nice. But it was $200 and I guess at the time I was being really cautious. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to put out $200 for an inkwell. And then it just started to work on me. You know, when you see something, you're like, oh, I really want it. And of course, my wife is a total enabler. She saw it and she's like, you got to buy that right now. And I think it was about a month went by or more. And I, I think I did another Egyptomania video and it came up again in my history. And it was still there. And that's when I was like, uh, I'm buying that. So I bought this. It's been sitting on my desk ever since. I have to be very careful with it right now because it's brimming with J. Urban Eclis de Saphir ink. One of my favorites, which consequently I put in my Egyptomania pen. 
So it complements so many of my pens. It's absolutely beautiful, the detail on it. I've shown the detail on the body. Do you see the detail around the cap too? It's just really, really fun. I should probably do a whole video on this. And I'm on the lookout for another one. I, I like it so much. I do see some other Egyptomania stuff come up, but it's normally busts and things of like Tutankhamun or Nefertiti or things along those lines. Or Sphinx. There's a lot of Sphinxes with flip heads. But this, absolutely brilliant with the J. Urban ink. So a highlight of the year. I hope if you want one, you find one out there. But if you do find one, you had better find it before I do. Because I'll probably buy it again. I like it so much. So very, very cool inkwell. So, yeah, Avec actually says that Inkwell deserves an entire video. I should probably do that. You know, it's the only Inkwell I own, too. And I love the idea of vintage Inkwells. And I probably could fall down a rabbit hole of collecting vintage Inkwells. So it's probably a little dangerous if I start looking. But, boy, it is so amazing. I see a lot of love for it out there. Thanks, guys. So, the Inkwell is a fantastic addition. Definitely one of the highlights of 2022. So, another discovery. And I don't want you guys to think that we're only speaking about expensive items here. I love fountain pens. I love basic beginner fountain pens. I love exclusive fountain pens. If you look at the whole spectrum of fountain pens from the platinum preppy up to like the writer series of Montblanc and say the upper end Monte uh, Grappa and Visconti collector pens and things the pens I like the least are the ones over around a thousand dollars I like a lot of pens that go up there, like the Viscontis and, and all those really interesting. The new, um, I don't know if it's Venezia or Venetia, the new celluloid uh, pen I'm drooling over. I love that. When they get ridiculous, like I think the one that's like Tutankhamun in the sarcophagus is kind of fun looking, but it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, with the Dante Alighieri, which is like five grand. I, I just, I don't understand pens that aren't comfortable and fun to write with. That's the only thing I don't, I don't get. Um, I think that, um, I, I don't know. I, I think there's almost like too much, too posh. So Adventure Denali says, I really want to get into vintage inkwells too to match my vintage pens. Yes. But as you said, it's a big rabbit hole, and I decided not to jump in. I think about it often, though. Sincerely, right? I mean, it's just it's just so fun to think of all the different possibilities. And and uh, nice to see Adventure Denali, by the way. Um, one of my favorite channels on here. You're absolutely brilliant, so nice to see you on here. But um, there's so many different styles in the vintage inkwell space. I do pull it up on eBay quite a bit and I scroll down and there's thousands, any sort of art direction you could possibly want, whatever you're into is there. Like my sort of sub niche right now is Egyptomania just because I love this one so much, but there's also amazing art deco ones. There's the classic desk ones. Um, my attorney has one that's made out of marble. It's this beautiful peach marble and a base with pens and the ink wells are sort of built in. So he has multiple colors. I mean, that's super fun too. So yes, it is a deep rabbit hole that I'm sure we would both fall into and be very, um, probably very enriched by what we find, but also very poor <laughs> by the time we get through it. But I think I'm going to make a few more acquisitions, but they're definitely going to be selective. I only have so much shelf space and the typewriters take up a lot of space. So we do the best we can. So good stuff. So another big discovery for me this year was the Pilot Kakuno. 
I didn't know about it. And I think I saw it on Jet Pens. And when I saw the little winky face, it was just so delightful. And I think there's something about anything that's anthropomorphized. I just love and I just find so cute. Like my daughter, as you guys know, I have a five-year-old. And she has a book of, I think it's called Kawaii Food and How to Draw It. So, which I believe means cute in Japanese. And it's different like hamburgers with like really charming faces and french fries and salads and sushi and things. And her and I, we draw in her book these um, little foodstuffs. And the pilot Kakuno has a bit of that charm. It's like this sort of Nintendo character quality in a fountain pen. And I just love it. I love it so much. Mine's blue. I bought two. Bought a blue and a pink one, and my wife liberated the pink one from me almost immediately, which I was really happy about. And the um, and the blue one is really, really delightful, too. So really excellent fountain pen and one of the best discoveries of 2022. So from the best to the one of the ones I enjoyed the least is the Jinhao 159 which I picked up earlier in the year. It's one of the heaviest pens I've ever written with. The nib wasn't very nice to me when I got it. And I don't like to do work on nibs. We often do, I'm sure many of you do, where you're doing work on nibs when you first get them. Um, but the, um, the 159 was a bit of a disappointment. Adventure Now, he says, your channel is brilliant, by the way. Thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate that because being such a small channel, I never know who's watching and who isn't. And sometimes you, you put these things out there and you just don't know what you get back. And I think that's what's so wonderful about the comments. And I spend a lot of time in my comments talking to people and kind of, you know, getting to know them and what they like. Because for a long time, when you're... I only have so many people who follow you as you know as a subscriber you almost feel like you're just putting these signals out in the dark like a space probe you're about to break free of the solar system you're just sending a beep out you hope somebody hears it so it's really wonderful when you hear back when you get feedback from someone like you i hold in very high esteem so thank you very much i really appreciate that very kind thank you I'm, I'm trying not to spend too much time in the comments. My comments, even here, are so great. You guys are very distracting, but we have a show to do, so let's keep it rolling. So another pen that I discovered was, I guess kind of rediscovered, was the Pelican M200. I had had Pelicans before, and they didn't survive my great pen purge of around, hmm, I guess it's around seven years ago when I decided I had too many and I gave them all away. And I kept like a core um, selection like my mom plan 149 I was writing with almost exclusively in those days for a couple years like that was like my main pen and then my Schaefer legacy which was uh, I've had for like 15 16 years uh, I kept that but a whole bunch of my pelicans I had let go and I regretted it I think it's it's nice to be generous and I think it's great to give pens away especially if you don't use them a lot because I think pens should be used and it's wonderful to make a gift and, and have somebody actually use it. But I started to really get into the beauty of Pelican with their beautiful nibs and the beautiful design. And then the M200 was just a nice addition after my wife had bought me the M600 um, tortoise the year before. So absolutely, absolutely brilliant one. So... So here's a story, because I don't want to just go down the list, and I think you guys will find this interesting. So the one bad thing about the Pelican M200 is that its lid has this Houdini-like ability to escape. It just wants to come undone, and then the pen falls out, and especially in a dress pocket. I'm in the banking world during my you know work day, and I often have a pocket here, and I'm, I have the bad habit of slipping a pen in there. And the M200 just wiggles around in my pocket. I love to come undone. And it's to the point when I either don't put it in my pocket, I carry it around in like my fist or I have it on my desk or I'm checking it constantly. 
So what happened was I had a very important business meeting and the M200 was in my pocket and it did the Houdini thing and it fell down point first and I just got this like bullet wound of bright black ink on my shirt and there's no coming back from that. And I had a business meeting, like me, my boss, or my and some other folks, and I had to look presentable. I didn't have anything to cover. And so I had to run out at lunch and pick up another shirt. So it was like the great pen disaster of 2022. So be careful with that Pelican M200 because it will, it will do you in. By the way, guys, um, we could have a drinking game on this channel. Anytime I misspeak and call something something else, you have to take a shot of, of your favorite beverage, Coca-Cola or otherwise. So pretty, I think tonight I've been doing pretty well because the comments usually correct me right away. So I appreciate that. So another discovery this year was the Shown Design uh, Pocket 6, which my wife bought me for my birthday. Very interesting pen. Mine is in copper. It reminds me a bit of a Lilliput on steroids, but um, very cool to have um, a number six nib in your pocket and able to use. If it's, it's a little cold as a pen because it's just sort of a tube with a nib. So design-wise, it's, it's not as inspiring as something like the M200 which will, which is great to write with. Incredibly smooth, beautiful, but hates me and wants to always destroy my clothes and my bags and everything else. But uh, very, very funny event this year. So one of my favorite inks that I discovered this year was Ferris Wheel Press's Tumbling Time Blue. And I really like how dark it was. And it has um, shimmer, which is nice. I don't put shimmer in any pen that I cannot field strip entirely. I would suggest you don't either, but certainly make your own decisions about these things. I just think that once it gets clogged in there, if it lays too much of it gets concentrated, which can certainly happen, and shaken pens to move shimmer around is not always the best thing we do it so i confine my shimmer use to twisbees twisby ecos lamy safaris things that i can easily take completely apart rinse thoroughly or soak for a couple days i don't put them in expensive pens but that tumbling time blue is a really great sort of blue black with some shimmer fantastic color so really, really cool color. So another pen that I discovered this year is the Banu Brown Orchid, which is part of the Ambrosia collection, which I just did a video on where I talk about fairies and fountain pens. I hope you guys caught that. It's a delightful video. Um, but the pen in question is really a magical pen and a different writing experience like anything else that I've used. And what really sucked me into this pen is that it has this bouquet of flowers around the cap that look like amber and they hold the light in a really interesting way. And the pen sort of brings out a more poetic quality to me. It just inspires me anytime I want to sit down and maybe write a love letter to my wife or a poem or something a little more creative than just my more sort of self-analyzing journal entries. Definitely when I'm getting expressive, that pen motivates me. The negative is it doesn't have a clip. So you find yourself carrying it around and it also is so wide, so girthy, if you will, that it doesn't fit in my pen holders. I use the Giorlojo elastic band pen holders. 
and it it doesn't really accommodate that very well. I can just about get the bottom in there, and maybe peer pressure from the other pens beside it hold it in place. But an absolutely delightful pen, and if you haven't caught my video on it, it's from a few weeks back. It's a lot of fun. I hope you guys like that. So I see a lot of love for the Banu out there. Wolf Seat Witch likes it, which is very, very cool. It's a really good one. Oh, and Daryl Morris also. Banu pens are so much fun. Absolutely. So a very fun pen. And I would say that if I probably should have done this like an award show. So like and the award goes to the most interesting beguiling pen to the Banu Brown Orchid. But I will say the award for the most beautiful, intricate grip and nib goes to the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. It is so interesting. It has this sort of, I hate to say steampunk because I always get a little mad at the steampunk people because they like to chop up typewriters and you guys know I'm a, this way, typewriter fan. But the sort of, Victorian industrial look of the Ferris wheel press brush pen is absolutely brilliant. And it's a very elegant pen. It's a pen that you can post, but they recommend that you don't because you can scratch the enamel. But it's a really nice writing experience. Um, Adventure Denali is a fan of the Banu. I agree. Absolutely wonderful pen. So on a whim, I decided to buy the Pilot E95S, but then I had to have it in the burgundy and ivory. And at the time it was sold out everywhere. So I ordered it and it came in like four months later. It came in so much later that I forgot that I had ordered it. And it was like this beautiful rediscovery. And I was almost surprised that you don't hear more about the Pilot E95S. I feel like it's this sort of slightly underrated, slightly underappreciated pen. Because one of the things that I really love about fountain pens is when you get something unique, like Banu. Banu has a value proposition that's all their own. There's nothing else like it. It is its own thing and it's magical. The E95S is very similar it's a pen that looks like it was transported directly from 1960. It has this very elegant, almost like a cosmetic product. You almost feel like a lipstick case or something when you slide the oversized cap off that then goes into the short body to make a very elegant, proper size pen. It's really great how all that works together as a design. And then on top of it, it has this fantastic gold pilot nib that's almost very aquiline um, and soft. And I, I can't say I get line variation out of it, but it's a super fun, gentle writing experience with it. And I always find myself using one of my favorite inks in it because it's burgundy. I put writer's blood in there. It doesn't hold a lot of ink. I think it has the Con 40 converter. You guys in the comments can fact check me on that but it's such a fun such a great pen i just feel like everyone should own it and i feel like it's a great value for what you get it's a little over a hundred dollars which is a lot of money but you do get a lot you get a, a wholly unique design with a fantastic gold nib that gives you some of the characteristics of a gold nib it does stuff that's different than what a steel nib does. And personally, I love gold nibs. I love steel nibs. I don't think that one is better than the other. They're just different. But gold does allow you to do some things that you can't with steel. Like the gold nib on the Egyptomania from Mont Blanc is really floppy. It's like a Waterman 52 and a half from the 20s. It's got that feel to it. You can, I don't know if you can do that with steel. But the Pilot E95S is also a very unique and interesting pen. And one of my favorites. I, I can't say enough really fun things about that. 
So I'm seeing a lot of love. Kaylee is a E95S uh, aficionado, if you will. And Neil likes it. Neil wants to get one. So I love seeing that. So I am a huge fan of the E95S guys. So I want to talk journals. I definitely took a deep dive into Bottega Obscura journals. I love these. I want to learn all about book binding since I've discovered these. This particular one was a gift from the gentleman who owns Bottega Obscura. He gave this to me personally, not from the company and not for any kind of um, quid pro quo or promoting or anything else. We've formed a friendship over our, our mutual love of Italy and talking about our family. So just a really lovely guy sent me this uh, a few weeks back um, as a thank you. But look at the workmanship. It has my initials there. It has these beautiful gold accents and these really cool medieval um, embellishments to the leather. The leather has a nice texture. It's very warm. <laughs> you can almost hug it. I mean, it's a great journal. For a lot of people, this could last a long time. For me, this is a six-month journal. Maybe I'll go longer because I'm writing really small. Um, but the paper is really nice. It's heavier paper. Um, you, have, you can specify which paper you want from him. The end papers are really beautiful. You know, the binding is sound. And they just look really cool on your shelf. So all handmade. Absolutely brilliant. So this is definitely one of the highlights of 2022. I love these. So much fun. I just started this one. Um, you can see I did use the bookmark, even though I'm only like four pages in. So it's not like I'm going to lose my space. But an absolutely brilliant journal. So definitely one of my, one of my favorites. So very cool stuff. Oh, Adventure Denali's digging it. Thanks so much. Um, you know, Adventure Nally makes an excellent point. She says, um, I'd be a little intimidated to mess it up. I, there is that feeling, and it's, it's almost that feeling, too, when you look at a blank page and you don't necessarily want to mark it. I, I would say you just have to plunge into it. I mean, you buy these things to use. It broke my heart a little yesterday because I'm journaling right now with an interesting pen. I'll show you this, guys. This is a Holy Grail pen that just arrived. So I just got this. I don't think the case is original, but it's a Waterman 5 in celluloid with a flex nib that goes from fine to double broad. The address that I showed at the beginning of the program was written with this. It's brilliant. But when you go into double broad, it puts a lot of ink down. And you know what happened, right? You know what I'm about to say. So my hand brushed it and it just smeared it just a little. I mean, a little. No one would notice it. But a part of me, part of me died a little. So it just happens. But it, it has to happen. I mean, especially with me, what sometimes when I journal, water will get on water-based inks and just something always happens. My daughter will show up and have food on her hands or something. But it's all part of the story of the journal. And we do the best we can, especially since, like, my handwriting's very inconsistent. So I'm not sure even my handwriting does it justice, but it's mine. I own it. I loved it. It was a gift. He's a lovely, lovely guy. It meant a lot to me. And, um, yeah, you just do the best you can. So there's certainly a consideration there. So another pen that came in this year was the Fountain Pen Revolution Mondras, which was an ebonite pen, which is a lot of fun. And it had an architect nib, which was my first architect nib. I've never written with one. And I'll say that I wasn't missing that much with the architect nib. My style of writing and the way I write sort of makes the nib pull all the wide strokes at the bottom of the letters. And it almost looks like when you get a, when you know when you get a hair in between the tines of your um, pen, it sort of wrote like that. So I'm not that great with it. I love the feel of the pen. The ebonite, ebonite is really warm in your hand and it has this, 
fantastic, almost organic property to it. So really cool. I got it in blue, which is absolutely gorgeous. So another huge highlight this year was another Grail pen. This is one that I bought, and it was one of those ones where it came up, and I had to make the choice, do I buy it or not? And this time, I chose buy it. So it was the Mont Blanc 146 with the calligraphy nib. And this is one of the most important stories I can relate to you guys. And you know some of it if you've been watching all my videos. So my thought was that Mont Blanc was making nibs that were similar to this celluloid pen like the Waterman. Now I already had the Egyptomania. So I know they're capable of making very flexy nibs. So are they capable of marrying that with a bit of line variation? And for what I was told, they are. So I had to have this pen. I did leverage the fact that the dollar was very strong. I bought it from a company in the Netherlands. I'm trying to remember its name because they're lovely. It's something like Fonte Plumo or something along those lines. I wish I would have researched it and checked because I, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Maybe one of you guys know and can let me know in the comments. But it's something along those lines. Great company. The dollar was strong. So I ended up getting like 25% off. So a $900 pen was in the sixes, which was nice. Still huge money. But this is a grail, guys. So I got it. I did an unboxing. I was very timid about trying to flex it because I didn't know what its capabilities were. I didn't want to overflex it. I have done that with a blue dew pen. I overflexed it and had to get a new nib. I, I totally destroyed it. So I was being very careful. And the Blue Dew fiasco had happened only a week and a half before or something when the 146 arrived. So got it, but initially loved it. It's so beautiful. And then I just felt this profound disappointment because it didn't do what I envisioned it should do. And in my expectations and imaginations, I felt like it should have flexed and did some major line variation, but it's just not designed to do that. It's a different sort of tool. It is quite literally for calligraphy. So you do a stroke, you wait, you do a stroke, you wait. When you're doing handwriting and you're trying to flex a rather stiff flex nib, it's exhausting. Your hand will cramp. You'll, it's not a pleasant experience. So I was very disappointed. But instead of hiding that disappointment, I made an entire video about it, about having this expectation and what happens when your dream doesn't come true. And I actually took a lot of um, criticism for that. A lot of folks saying that I, I, um, I shouldn't be negative about it and whatnot. It was sort of an interesting dynamic, but you, you learn these things. Now, what has happened since? And you know I do follow-up videos. Everything is a conversation on this channel. We develop themes. It's all about taking ideas and seeing where you are. You're always reevaluating. I've since started taking the Mont Blanc calligraphy courses, which, by the way, I'm still hopeless, hopeless. But I do want to really plunge in more. So, in doing it, I realized that that pen is a powerful, awesome tool. It's amazing. I just wasn't using it for what it was meant for. And now I'm going the other way. First of all, it is a very smooth extra fine. And now I appreciate that quite a bit. And just the fact that you can flex it and it comes right back and it's very responsive. And here's the funny thing too. The more I use it, the softer it's getting. So wait and see. We'll see where that pen is come springtime. But it was definitely a highlight of the year. It was a lot of really interesting um, content I was able to make. I hope you guys catch it. Some of it was filmed on the beach. I used a couple lines from The Great Gatsby and whatnot. I think you'll really enjoy it. If you haven't seen it, go find it in my in my catalog, if you would. So definitely interesting. Another pen was the 
Estherbrook Nouveau Blue in an oversized with the SD Flex nib. Now, the SD Flex nib is an entirely different animal. This one is stiffer, and they don't make any grand exclamations that it's incredibly soft and incredibly flexy. But what it's great for is emphasis. It's a smooth, fun writing pen. You can um, do your regular handwriting. And then if you want to sign something with a flourish, have a beautiful downstroke full of wet, inky goodness, that pen will do it with alacrity. And it's a lot of fun, and it's great for really thick exclamation points at the end of your writing. Or if you maybe want to begin your paragraphs with a gothic letter or a Spencerian sort of design, you could do that with that pen. Absolutely brilliant. Would you want to flex each letter in a long word, a long paragraph? No, it would get exhausting. But for emphasis, it's brilliant. And it's a fun pen and it's a beautiful pen. I love Esterbrook. I love how the modern Esterbrook has picked up the ethos of vintage Esterbrooks where they have different sort of nibs, different writing experiences, and they absolutely enchant you with their finishes. The Nouveau Blue is absolutely gorgeous. And it was inspired by Alphonse Mucha, which I did a whole video on as well because anytime I can speak about an artist it's a lot of fun and it was really a big deep dive into him as well so absolutely fun pen one of the highlights of the year for me just absolutely enjoy it so there was an event too I went to it was the Commonwealth Pen Show we went in September it was my second year of going Got to meet some of the folks that are with us this evening at the Commonwealth Pen Show, which was absolutely lovely. Uh, met a lot of people, a lot of vendors. Of course, Brian Holser from Esterbrook was there. The folks from um, Apple Boom were there. Uh, the gentleman that makes all the videos, even though I don't know him, I got to say hi. He seemed like a nice fellow. There were some nib grinders, so many vintage pens, lots of used or vintage however you want to parse it Montblanc 149s so I always say you guys if you want one of those pens the best way to get it is second hand they were ranging between 500 and 600 so I feel like you could easily have walked out with a really nice Montblanc 149 for around 500 bucks which is a great way to get one so very 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 cool time to go there um, my wife and my daughter came with me and just I think I made some friendships that are going to last a long time so had some super fun yep Wolf Seat Witch was there we met it was absolutely brilliant brilliant day brilliant fun so shortly thereafter I acquired the Jinhao X159 and this was one of the big disappointments of the year. It was a pen that I really wanted to like. I love the idea of an entry-level pen that has the dimensions and the general writing experience of the 149, which is one of my favorite pens. But however, I got the luck of the draw and mine was super scratchy with a lot of false starts. And I had cleaned it twice. I put in, I believe I put in writer's blood, which is a pretty wet ink. I was just really expecting something better from this pen. Now, if I'm going to recommend a beginner pen, it has to be reliable from the start because I make an assumption, perhaps wrongly, that a beginner may not know how to tune a nib. And I don't necessarily like to tell people like the paper bag trick. I'm sure you guys know it. Or the rolling trick or the little bit of pressure trick that we all do to get our nibs to open up and perform for us when we're disappointed in this regard. Because if it's your first time doing it, you can destroy a nib. Now, certainly it was $6, but still. I hold these things in very high esteem. 
I got a lot of criticism on that. Pardon me one second. I need a little bit of a drink. My voice goes out when we approach an hour. Okay. I got a lot of criticism on that video because I think people thought I was picking on an inexpensive pen. I treated that pen with so much respect. I took it to our local farm stand and I filmed it as if it were a $1,000 Visconti pen. I really liked it. I thought it was beautiful. I love the burgundy color. I really wanted to like that pen, but it just let me down. I did work on it. After the video was filmed, after I did all my review, I did some more work on it and it started to open up. But still, not something I can recommend just based on the fact that pens shouldn't be hobby kits. They should come ready to use for everyone. They should have a pretty high hit rate. And I, that goes for a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age all the way down to Jinhao X159. And anytime I ever see that, I'm going to call it out. And I want to be consistent about that. So that is my opinion about that. And that's where I was coming from when I made the video. It's still one of my most popular videos. A lot of folks watched it, probably because my wife features prominently and she looks really cute shopping for vegetables, but had a super fun time treated the pen with a lot of respect, a lot of beautiful B-roll holding the pen in front of pumpkins. So if you haven't seen it, check it out in my back catalog. I think you'll enjoy it. So that was a bit of a detour, I think, for my pen journeys of the year. But another highlight was the Esterbrook Camden. The Camden is a really pretty pen. Mine is in the Oktoberfest finish, which is this gorgeous yellow to gold to orange very much looks like fall foliage absolutely beautiful it also has the sd flex nib so i have two pens with that nib once again great for emphasis fun to write with absolute joy so another really nice highlight of the year i think now here's a big highlight oh i have it here so I partnered with Conway Stewart to do one video, a review, which I hope you guys saw. Um, did like a documentary on the Blitz and tied it to the Churchill pen. This is the Conway Stewart Churchill Honey Noir with a lever fill. This is like it came out of a time capsule. It has such a vintage look to it. I'm amazed they were able to produce something that is so convincingly vintage spec with the lever fill it it gives you the impression that it's celluloid it's not it's resin but it's beautiful the resin goes all the way to the nib which is super fun the bands are in nine karat gold fantastic lever so conway stewart partnered with me to produce the one video i did the best i could with it i think it's beautiful i think i say a lot in it and I reviewed the pen, but I think a lot of the review might have been lost in doing the documentary on the Blitz, too. But still, I think it gives a really good impression. However, I just made another review of this pen, which many of you saw last Tuesday night. And I've edited it together, and I'm going to release it this weekend. And it's just a straightforward edit. And I call it my second thoughts, my update on this pen. But... Guys, this is one of the highlights of my fountain pen life. It does have a Yovo nib that's gold that's um, assembled by John Soraka over in the UK, which I like because I always feel like I get bad stuff. I always feel like there's something wrong with everything I get. I, have a, I don't know if it's a persecution complex or I just obsess in the wrong places. And it just gives me peace of mind that someone with his talent has tried it and assembled it. And it's a really great nib. It's very smooth, very expressive. It's a lot of fun. So if you want the unvarnished review, which isn't sanctioned by Conway Stewart because I had a one video deal with them, then check that out. I believe it goes up Sunday at noon this weekend. So very straightforward review. 
lots of beautiful B-roll. I think you guys will like it. But a lot less flashy than the Churchill one. But if you haven't seen the Churchill one, please check it out because I put a lot of work into it. I'd appreciate it. It'd make me happy. So that's definitely a highlight. Another highlight was another entry level pen. And this is something I think you all can relate to. And I'll show you it again. I've showed you guys it before, but I'm going to show you. So this came from Jet Pens. And like many of you, I can very easily get sucked into Jet Pen videos. And then the credit card comes out and I just have to buy stuff. Because there are a few things as charming and interesting as Japanese stationery. It's just brilliant. So for one thing, I love my pen case. It's so portable and it's so great. It's easy to take to work and bring home. And I have a lot of really fun things in here. I have my metric ruler, which is great. I'm very low tech. I'm using this to measure pens and to measure nibs and things. It's absolutely brilliant. I should probably use it when I address envelopes so that they don't go off on a slant, but I have it, but I should. Another thing I have in here, guys, you got to have one of these if you don't. It's a glue stick with a very nice secure cap. So it's not going to dry up. It goes on blue so you know when the glue is going on. And then listen to this cap. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So this is what I use to seal envelopes because I don't like to lick envelopes. They are not pleasant and I don't like it. So I got this for envelopes and then Here's another really cool thing. I should probably do a video on this. See this? It's not a pen, guys. Look at this thing, right? This comes off. These come down. And it's like one of the best pairs of scissors you've ever owned. It's so handy. I can't tell you how much I use these. Like I carry a pocket knife for cutting things like boxes and tags and things. But this is a lot better for tags and clothes and things but look at that I'll show you again so you just push these levers down and it makes the little things for you to use the scissor it's just brilliant you see them right there Isn't that great so you push them up put the cap on and those are your portable scissors you can take them anywhere it's very light very nice so I hope you don't mind this little detour guys but I love this stuff this is a highlighter and you know how sometimes if you're using a highlighter and you pass over black ink or blue ink, it'll get all dirty and never work again. Well, this isn't a magic marker. It's a pencil. It's so brilliant. And it's as neon as any highlighter you've ever seen, but it'll never get dirty. And even if it did, it comes with a pencil sharpener so you can just clean it. It's so great and so fun. I also have a little notebook. That's not that exciting. But what is exciting, what also I bought with this, is the Legendary Platinum Preppy, which is a super fun entry-level pen that I think anyone would enjoy. I feel like the nib is almost in the Lamy um, design um, group. It slides on from the look of it. I didn't take it off, similar to how the, the Lamy does on the Safari, but very cool pen, really a lot of fun, and a very satisfying cap. Yeah, that's nice. So this this was great. This was a great discovery I made later this year. And Jet Pens gets me every time. Love them. Love their videos. They suck me in. So very, very fun part of my fountain pen journey this year. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to go through some vintage stationery with you guys. And there's actually a video coming up where I feature it. And that is my how to write a love letter video coming up in January. I hope you guys like it. It's different and it's very personal and I open up to you guys. And I just wanted to get some techniques out there for you to kind of do your own thing with. But it was also a way to... Take all the different things we spoke about in this channel since it started a year and a half ago. Ink colors, pen choice, paper choice, word choice. Put it all together and make something that you can give to somebody as like a testament of how much you adore them. Family, friend, or spouse, partner, whatever it is. 
that's important to you in your life. So I'm really excited for that. It's how we're going to kick off the new year. Plus the B-roll was shot at Hammond Castle. I think you guys are going to really like it. So keep that in mind after Christmas. So really cool stuff. So we did a video on whether or not you should post a pen. I was one of those people where if I couldn't post a pen, I wouldn't buy a pen. The Egyptomania knocked me out of that and various other pens through the year have changed me. And some pens that I historically posted, I stopped posting. The Conway Stewart, for instance, posts, but it's ridiculously long when it posts and it is very back heavy. Kind of like the Twisby Diamond 580, which gets really back heavy if you post it. So I've learned not to post. So I am in my unposting phase. But a very interesting video if you're so inclined to check it out. <laughs> James Faye says, your wife buys you Mont Blanc pens. I want to write her love letter. Yeah, well, I guess I have a lot of reason to, right? She's pretty great. And she I know what she bought me for Christmas. Uh, I haven't received it yet, but I know it's in the house. And uh, it's another stunner, guys. It's another stunning pen. One could say it's a very antique idea pen. You could say that you've gone, you've gone all the way back to the Bronze Age. You could say that. So I'm very excited about that. And by the way, I know you guys have been with me for over an hour, and I always say I'm going to try to make this an hour, but we're going late tonight, and we're going to keep going because I'm almost done this list, and then I want to talk about some channel highlights, and then I want to get into television shows. So I thought it might be fun to just do something a little off topic that we can all relate to. So stick with me for a few more minutes, won't you? So one of the other important videos I think we did this year was on a signature ink. And this was a concept of, is there an ink where someone would recognize it and know it was you? And if so, what would that ink be? So one of my favorite movies, and it's not exactly the best movie in the world, but I love it, is called A Good Year. And it's about an ad exec from London who moves to Provence, falls in love, the whole thing. And it's uh, Russell Crowe and um, Albert Finney, a few other people. But within that, his uncle has this Gerbon ink that is his ink. And it's part of the whole plot, but it's really interesting because that's his signature ink. You see that green, you know it's his Uncle Henry. So very cool um, thing for the film. So that was the idea. And the question is like, which would yours be? For me, it's probably Diamine um, Oxblood, or it could possibly be Krishna Moonview, but I don't put that in everything. Or it could be Jair Bond's Eclipse de Saphir. But see, now that I've said three, I've disqualified myself because it's supposed to be one. So it's kind of a hard concept, but it's a lot of fun to think about, right? Neil says, your channel inspires me to start journaling. I, that is the nicest comment. Thank you so much. I hope I do. That's my whole mission is to try to inspire you guys to keep writing, to express yourselves. So that's, that's brilliant. So we're getting near the end of what I did this year in videos. And I think one of the most important videos I did this year, and it was very well received by you guys, thank you, was the Why Handwriting Matters. The one on cursive that was filmed at Hammond Castle. And it's basically a celebration of writing by hand and writing in cursive. So very, very cool video that did rather well. So thank you for that. Okay, so now that we covered our pen journey, that was a lot of pens we did this year. And I didn't say them all. There was a narwhal in there. There was a Monte Verde in there. There were a bunch of other pens too. But that was the highlights, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the ridiculous, the failures, the where we strove and we didn't quite reach it and, and where we did. So on the basis of this channel, 3,416 subscribers joined this year. So thank you all so much. That is the biggest most amazing thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My 
top videos were the top five fountain pens for business, my top five favorite pens, can a fountain pen be too perfect, which is about the Pilot Custom 823. That was another one of my top videos. So very, very cool that that one did so well because I love the Pilot Custom 823. I have it in, is it called Amber? I forget the color now, forgive me. I think it's Amber. And I right now have in it uh, Diamine Ancient Copper, which I think really complements it very, very well. So the top countries that watch this channel, no surprise, the United States, but India is my second channel, which is really cool because I really love fountain pens and papers that come from India. So I think it's really great that there's a lot of people in that country that watch this channel. So greetings to you all. Thank you very much. And then the third is the UK, which is sort of my second home. My wife is British, as you guys know, and we spend quite a bit of time there. So absolutely, absolutely brilliant. So here's another interesting statistic. We spent 1,241 live streaming minutes this year. And considering that I've only started about three months ago, that's a lot of time we spent together live, which I think is really nice because not every channel goes live. And I just think it's great to have this kind of connection and interaction because I'm nothing without you guys. And I, I love our exchange and the friendships we're forming. It's absolutely brilliant. So I'm, I'm glad you're there. Um, my number one live was called Don't Buy This Pen. And it was about not being materialistic and just enjoying the experience of fountain pens. And I make that point a lot. I know we talk about a lot of posh pens. We talk about a lot of expensive pens. But if you write with a ballpoint pen, and you write in a notebook that you bought at the supermarket, I support you 100%. You're on our team. You know, as long as you're expressing yourself and you're enjoying it and you're having that mindfulness and sitting down and getting into your head and decompressing and, and just really embracing the activity, that's what this channel is about. It's not about showing off that you have some kind of expensive $1,000 pen or something. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just all about what you do with it and how it makes you a better person, how it opens you up to other people and makes you more interesting and more interested in the human experience and other people. And that's something that I've really learned with you guys in connecting with you over this year. So in summation of the year, the year was about you guys and I feel like I really grew and changed as a person. I would have never done the video I did a few weeks back about my crazy life and how fountain pens saved me if I didn't have all of your support every week, sort of reinforcing the fact that I'm okay and that I'm doing a decent job here and you guys enjoy it. I wouldn't have opened up like that. You guys are holding me up and I appreciate it. Now, if I can give you a little bit of entertainment, a little something to think about, a little bit of inspiration each week, then I'm doing my job and I'm happy. And I'm really, really thankful that you're there. This would have been a great place to end, but I didn't get through the uh, TV shows yet. So let's have some fun before we wrap up. Um, I would like to say, consider joining the channel. I do appreciate it. But it's also a nice way to get even more focus with you guys. We're having so much fun back there. And the pen pal thing is awesome. Um, I'm having a lot of fun writing letters. So, And just tell you some of the other stuff that we do back there. Uh, I read some of my poems. That might be more of a punishment. But I do that. Was it the Volgans in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that would torture people with their poems? Hopefully mine's not that bad. But I also read journal entries. I put up blooper reels. I do some exclusive content. If I get a new pen, I often show it back there first. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, TV show time and what I think. So this is almost like a lightning round. Obi-Wan. I watched Obi-Wan and I kind of wish I didn't. It wasn't very enjoyable. There's a great fight scene between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader 
if you're going to watch it, just watch the fight scene. That's really the whole show. That was the best part, in my opinion. Some very nice uh, comments from you guys. Thank you. Excuse me one sec. Ice tea, guys. So, yeah, very disappointed with Obi-Wan, but even more disappointed with Boba Fett. Boba Fett was the weirdest TV show I ever saw because there were episodes that he wasn't in. And actually, the best episodes were the ones that he wasn't in. And the fact that it's Boba Fett and the best episodes were when it was all about the Mandalorian is kind of sad. So kind of a disappointment. Another one is Moon Knight. Moon Knight was kind of fun and not horrible, but just not super great. And I really loved Oscar Isaac. I thought he was brilliant. And I really cared for his characters. All, all of them except for one. But just like really, really interesting show, but didn't quite live up to what it could have been. Another really cool show. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. But they're, it's an anthology of really short science fiction based animation computer animation and other things some of them are brilliant some of them are strange but this year they had one it was called i think ibaru or ibaru it was so amazing it was one of the most visually interesting things i've ever seen and it was these groups of spanish conquistadors that find i guess what's like a water pixie or a water sprite in this stream and kind of go to war with it but there's a bit of seduction and then there's like these themes of of like repression and and mistreatment and wealth and ex exploitation all this in this 20 minutes that is so visually stunning and intense and strangely beautiful that it was some of the most interesting television i've ever seen and i'm still just amazed and enchanted by what I saw. So seek that out if you have Netflix. It was absolutely brilliant. Another one that I watched that was very disappointing was The Crown. The Crown has turned into a slog. It used to be really interesting and really breezy, but somewhat historically based. And the later seasons are tedious and not as fun. So I am not enjoying that so much. So Neil Spector says, wait, pen pals? Yes. In the upper levels of the membership behind the curtain, we are doing pen pals. So very, very fun. Currently, we're exchanging letters with me. But in the future, we're going to exchange letters, everybody, because... The one thing about me exchanging letters with everyone means I got to write a lot of letters and I don't want people to have to wait too long. And I think you guys would really enjoy writing letters with each other. So that's the next step. We're going to organize that. And if somebody wants to start, be my guest, but we're definitely going to do that. So The Crown was a bit of a disappointment, but here is a surprise. Here's one of those shows that I really enjoyed and I didn't have much of a frame of reference for. And that's The Peacemaker. Did anybody watch that? It's a DC comic. He was a minor character in one of the Suicide Squad movies. He was a major character. But it's John Chena. And um, I'm not a fan of his or anything. I think he's a, from a sport or something. But he's an actor. And, but he's really charming in this. And it, it's a strange show. But I really enjoyed it. It was very well done. It was definitely a highlight of the year for me. Definitely a highlight. So another one was Irma Vep or Veep. Have you guys heard of this? It was a really enchanting movie from the 90s that had, um, was it Maggie Chung? And she was married to a French director. And they took this silent movie and they remade it in the 90s, but it became kind of meta. And it's really an art house film that's very interesting. Well, that same director brought it back again and brought another level of meta to it. And the thing about me is like, I'm not a big fan of celebrity culture or self-congratulatory filmmaking 
those are genres I stay away from. I I don't look up to celebrities so much. It's just not my thing. This contradicts all that. This the whole idea of this was all about the process of filmmaking, the idea of celebrity. There were some characters in here that were so much fun. There were moments that happened. You don't really know why things are happening the way they're happening. It raised so many questions that it didn't necessarily answer. And I always say that about art, that a great painting asks a lot of questions that it doesn't necessarily answer. And that makes it fun because you can talk and you can really delve into it and really sort of dissolve yourself into the different problems and qualities of it. So Irma Veep, amazing, fun, but different. Very, very, very different. So, another highlight for me was House of the Dragon. And like you guys, I was definitely against... I mean, I think a lot of you guys. The whole Game of Thrones thing, I was over. I wasn't very pleased with the last one. I said, I'm not going to watch this. It's not worth my time. But it had the benefit of coming on... When nothing else was on. And so I fell into it. With my wife of course. And we watched it. And it was interesting. And it was fun. And it was more about the stuff you like about Game of Thrones. The plotting. The behind the scene machinations. The political alliances. Things like that. So very fun. Got into it. Enjoyed it in a huge way. Another one was The Rings of Power. Tried to watch it. I didn't like it at all. Barely made it through the first episode, watched half of the second episode, and then realized that my life is too short to watch um, such a bad show. So, sadly, beautiful looking show. Um, like the cast, thought they were really good, but the story I didn't like and the characters just didn't do it for me. So, so that was a bit of a disappointment. Stranger Things 4 fantastic show enjoyed that so much so emotional love the kate bush song love that moment if you haven't seen it i won't ruin it but i still think of it sometime and i think now that i'm a dad it's kind of even more resonant but like just rooting for a character so much and just liking a character so much we recently watched wednesday which was a delight um started off kind of not great the first episode's not great but it it really gets going and has a lot of character development and was a lot of fun it's very twee but it's good and i i definitely um i definitely enjoyed that so two more one is we're watching andor if you've lost your faith in star wars andor will restore it. andor is great we're enjoying every minute of that and the last, and it's in the media, and yes, I fell into it too, was White Lotus Season 2. And I'll have to say, you guys, there were shows that were better than White Lotus this year. But White Lotus was the most fun I had watching television all year. Every moment, I enjoyed. It was just so much fun. So great. So that's my year in media if you will so i appreciate you guys sitting through that i tried to make it quick i don't want to be tedious i know we're a pen channel but we should be able to talk about other things too so once again i do want to say i appreciate you all being here it's nice that we have this forum we're not affiliated with any pen shops we're not affiliated with pen companies so this is all independent ideas independent opinions I can say anything. Even if somebody gives me a pen to review, I can excoriate it if it's terrible. So that's a lot of freedom you don't necessarily get elsewhere. But I generally love fountain pens. I love inks. I love journals. It has to go pretty far for me not to like it. Even some pens that I had issues with, like the Jinhao X159, I still like it. I still use it. It sat on my desk for a long time. It's not here now because other things have supplanted it. But still great pens i love these things i want you guys to use them get a little sunlight on them take them out in the field and just really make them a part of your 
life. Avec, your pen pals never write back. Well, you know what? In our membership area, we can embarrass somebody if they don't write back. So, <laughs> you know, gently. We can gently prod them. So um, I expect people to write back. I think they will. There's no pressure. There's no hurry. And there's no, like, minimum. You could write a couple sentences. That would be fine. There's a little bit of that blank page. Um, I don't want to say intimidation, but maybe that's an okay word. What do I write? What do I say to them? It's okay to just talk about your day or where you are. You can go as deep or shallow as you wish. You're among friends and you won't be criticized. So that's the beautiful thing. We might critique your choice of ink and pen, but we're not going to criticize what you write. So don't worry. It'll be super, super fun. So we do have a lot of fun back in the membership area. We're doing pen pals now. We do blooper reels. I read some journal entries. A lot of fun stuff. So for the rest of this week, I did my top five favorite inks for Thursday. For over the weekend, I have the straightforward, unvarnished review of the Conway Stewart coming out with some B-roll. That's super fun. I think you'll enjoy that. Next week, we'll do another live. We'll probably do two lives next week. I'm not sure if I have a video ready to go or not. Um, this time of year, views are down. So I'm not going to put up something that's high concept that will just get lost. We're going to do that in January and start off the year with a bang. Even though views are down in January too, generally. But still, you got to release fun stuff, right? But I think what we're going to do is a lot of lives through the end of the year. Have some interesting guests coming up. Um, very close to settling on some dates and times with somebody who has a very inspiring channel, very interesting YouTube content, and she's a storyteller. And I think you guys would really appreciate someone who has their own perspective and tells really interesting visual stories with some great prose. So that'll be coming up in January as well and a few other people. So stick with us. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Let's see some love for wax seals in the comments. So Neil's taken off, I think, but thank you, my friend. Appreciate having you here. So I'm very glad. If you guys consider becoming a member, maybe get in the top tier, join our pen pal group, and uh, I will write you shortly. And then we will start writing each other, which will be super fun. Okay, I think we've said enough. I think we've said it all. I think I'm out of things to say, but it's been wonderful spending time with you guys. You mean the world to me. Thank you so much for being here. It was a fantastic show because of you. Thank you, Adventure Denali, for watching. It was lovely having you here. I hope you stop back. I hope each and every one of you stop back. I love seeing you in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going. And I promise we will see each other again further up the road. So take care. Good night.